Mr. Yang, women, on average, urge, earn 80 cents, about 80 cents, for every dollar earned by men. <clears throat> Senator Harris wants to find companies that don't close their gender pay gaps. As an entrepreneur, do you think a stiff fine will change how companies pay their female employees? I have seen firsthand the inequities in the business world where women are concerned, particularly in startups and entrepreneurship. We have to do more at every step. And if you're a woman entrepreneur, the obstacles start not just at home, but then when you seek an, a mentor or an investor, often they don't look like you and they might not think your idea is the right one. In order to give women a leg up, what we have to do is we have to think about women in every situation, including the ones who are in exploitative and abusive jobs and relationships around the country. I'm talking about the waitress who's getting harassed by her boss at the diner, who might have a business idea, but right now is stuck where she is. What we have to do is we have to give women the economic freedom to be able to improve their own situations and start businesses. And the best way to do this is by putting a dividend of $1,000 a month into their hands. It would be a game changer for women around the country because we know that women do more of the unrecognized and uncompensated work in our society. It will not change unless we change it. And I say that's just what we do. Senator Harris, your response. I think that's support of my proposal, which is this. Since 1963, when we passed the Equal Pay Act, we have been talking about the fact women are not paid equally for equal work. Fast forward to the year of our Lord, 2019, and women are paid 80 cents on the dollar, black women 61 cents, Native American women 58 cents, Latinas 53 cents. I'm done with the conversation. So yes, I am proposing, in order to deal with this, one, I'm gonna require corporations to post on their website whether they are paying women equally for equal work. Two, they will be fined for every 1% differential between what they are paying men and women, they will be fined 1% of their previous year's profits. That'll get everybody's attention. Thank you, Senator. Senator Time Gillibrand. for action. Senator Gillibrand, what's your response? Will finding companies help solve the problem? Um, I think we have to have a broader conversation about whether we value women and whether we want to make sure women have every opportunity in the workplace. And I want to address uh, Vice President Biden directly. Um, when the Senate was debating uh, middle class affordability for child care, he wrote an op-ed. He voted against it, the only vote. But what he, he wrote in op-ed was that he believed that uh, women working outside the home would, quote, create the deterioration of family. Um, he also said that women who were working outside the home were, quote, avoiding responsibility. And I just need to understand, as a woman who's worked my entire career as the primary wage earner, as the primary caregiver, in fact, the second, my second son, Henry, is here. And I had him uh, when I was a member of Congress. So under Vice President Biden's analysis, am I serving in Congress? resulting in the deterioration of the family because I had access to quality, affordable daycare. I just want to know what he meant when he said that. That was a long time ago, and here's what it was about. It would have given people making today $100,000 a year a tax break for child care. I did not want that. I wanted the child care to go to people making less than $100,000, and that's what it was about. As a single father who, in fact, raised three children, for five years by myself, I have some idea what it costs. I support making sure that every single solitary person needing child care get an $8,000 tax credit now. That would put 700,000 women back to work, increase the GDP by almost eight tenths of 1%. It's the right thing to do if we can give tax breaks Thanks. to corporations for these things. Why can't we do it this way? But Mr. Thank Vice you. President, you didn't answer my question. What did you mean when you said, when a woman works outside the home, it's resulting in, quote, the deterioration of family? No, what and I that didn't... we are avoiding, these are quotes. It was the title of the op-ed. No. And that just causes concern for me because we know America's women are working. Four out of 10 moms have to work. They are the primary or sole wage earners. They actually have to put food on the table. Eight out of 10 moms are working today. Most women have to work to provide for their kids. Many women want to be working to provide for their communities you, and Senator. to help people. Let so the Vice President respond either you respond don't believe it you. today, or what did you mean when you said it In then? In the very beginning, my deceased wife worked, but we had children. My present wife has worked all the way through raising our children. 
The fact of the matter is, the situation is one that I don't know what's happened. I wrote the Violence Against Women Act, Lily Ledbetter. I was deeply involved in making sure there are the equal pay amendments. I was deeply involved in all these things. I came up with the It's On Us proposal to see to it that women were treated more decently on college campuses. You came to Syracuse University with me and said it was wonderful. I'm passionate about the concern making sure women are treated equally. I don't know what's happened except that you're now running for president. So I understand. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Vice President, I respect you deeply. I respect you deeply. But those words are very specific. You said women working outside the home would lead to the deterioration of family. My grandmother worked outside the home. So my, my mother worked outside the home. And, and Thank from, you, Senator Gillibrand. So, well, he has I, I either, want to bring Senator Harris Either he no longer believes it. I mean, I just think he needs to... I never to... believed it. Thank uh, you. Okay. Senator Harris, please respond. Well, I just... You, listen, I mean, you talk about now running for president and you change your position. On the Hyde Amendment, Vice President, where you made a decision for years to withhold resources to poor women to have access to reproductive health care, and in, including women who were the, the, the victims of rape and incest... Do you now say that you have evolved and you regret that? Because you've only, since you've been running for president this time, said that you had, you in some way would take that back or you didn't agree with the decision that you made over many, many years. And many, this many... directly impacted so many women in our country. And yep. I personally prosecuted rape cases and child molestation cases. And the experience that those women have, those children have, and that they would then be denied Thank the you, resources. Senator. Let the vice president respond, I think is, is unacceptable? The fact is that uh, the senator knows that's not my position. Everybody on this stage has been in the Congress and the senator house has voted for the Hyde Amendment at some point. The Hyde Amendment in the past was available because there was other access for those kinds of services provided privately. But once I wrote the legislation making sure that every single woman would in fact be have an opportunity to have health care paid for by the federal government, everyone, that that could no longer stand. I support a woman's right to choose. I support it's a constitutional right. I've supported it. I will continue to support it. And I will in fact move as president to see too that the Congress legislates that that is the law Thank as you. well. well Thank why you, Mr. Vice President. So Governor long Inslee, to change response? your position on the Hyde Amendment. Why did it take so long until you were running for president to change your position on the Hyde Amendment? Because there was not full federal funding for all reproductive services prior to this point. Okay. Thank you. Governor Inslee, your response? I, I would suggest that we need to broaden our discussion. I would suggest we need to think about a bigger scandal in America, which is that in professions and careers where women have been uh, more than the majority, they have been almost always underpaid. And that is why this year I'm proud to be the governor who won the largest pay increase for our educators in the United States. And I believe that that is long, long overdue. I think it is true for nursing staff as well. And I'm glad that we've now passed Thank new you. measures. And I'm glad that we've increased our union membership 10% Thank you, so governor. unions can Thank stand you, governor up Inslee. for women I want to well. turn to foreign policy, if we can. Senator Booker. There are about 14,000 U.S. service members if, in Afghanistan right now. If elected, will they still be in Afghanistan by the end of your first year in office? Well, first of all, I want to say very clearly that uh, I will not do foreign policy by tweet, as Donald <laughs> Trump seems to do all the time. A guy that literally tweets out that we're pulling our troops out before his generals even know about it is creating a dangerous situation for our troops in places like Afghanistan. And so I will bring our troops home and I will bring them home as quickly as possible. But I will not set during a campaign an artificial deadline. I will make sure we do it. We do it expeditiously. We do it safely to not create a vacuum that's ultimately going to destabilize the Middle East and perhaps create the environment for terrorism and for extremism to threaten our nation. Uh, Congresswoman Gabbard, you're the only veteran on the stage. Please respond. This is real in a way that's very difficult to convey in words. I was deployed to Iraq in 2005 during the height of the war where I served in a field medical unit where every single day I saw the high cost of war. Just this past week, two more of our soldiers were killed in Afghanistan. My cousin is deployed to Afghanistan right now. Nearly 300 of our Hawaii National Guard soldiers are deployed to Afghanistan. 14,000 
service members are deployed there. This is not about arbitrary deadlines. This is about leadership, the leadership I will bring to do the right thing, to bring our troops home within the first year in office, because they shouldn't have been there this long. For too long, we've had leaders who have been arbitrating foreign policy from ivory towers in Washington without any idea about the cost and the consequence, the toll that it takes on our service members, on, our, on their families. We have to do the right thing, end these wasteful regime change wars, and bring our Thank troops you. home.